coming up today on Real Life. Um, I first found out I was pregnant in October of 2010, 2011, and um, my first thoughts were basically what any teenage girl would think, oh my goodness, I'm pregnant. This was not my plan, and I can't see through it. This glaring light in front of me. Pregnant? Me? How will I finish school and provide for a child? When I first found out I was pregnant, I was terrified. I didn't know what to think or how to respond. I didn't, I didn't know what I was gonna do, so um, I cried a whole lot and just prayed a lot um, about the choice that I was about to have to make. Well, I've always known the story, bits and pieces, of course, um, depending on the age that I was that was appropriate to share. But the day that I found out that three doctors wanted me dead was heart-wrenching. Hi, I'm Monica, and I'm glad you could join us today on Real Life. On Real Life, we bring you true stories of women and men who have faced unplanned pregnancies. Today on Real Life, you're going to hear from birth moms, children, and adoptive parents who recognize the sacrifice and bravery that adoption can bring into the lives of families. Um, I first found out I was pregnant in October of 2010, 2011, and um, my first thoughts were basically what any teenage girl would think, oh my goodness, I'm pregnant, I'm still in high school, what are my parents gonna think? Um, I was really scared, I didn't know what I would do. It was hard. Placing my baby for adoption was hard, considering, I mean, it's, a hard thing to do, it, it's not easy, but knowing that in the end he was going to be with a family who could take care of him and give him everything that he wanted, knowing that in my heart, just, I felt so much better. My reason was I wanted him to have the absolute best, and I couldn't give that to him at this moment in my life, and that's why I chose adoption. It's a good feeling. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of what I did. I was adopted and it's, I mean, I've lived like the best ever. I've had many wonderful opportunities in life because of all of this. And now, I mean, I came out stronger than ever and I can finally go and tell people my adoption story. I think birth moms are superheroes because they're so brave. They have so much courage to say that they love their baby so much and they know that they can't take care of the baby, so they place the baby with another family that can give them a great life. Since I'm placing my child for adoption, that I've grown from my old lifestyle and um, I'm a lot stronger. I'm, you have to be strong to go through this, and it'll make you strong in the, in the long run. When I told my adoption story to other people that don't know much about it, I either got negative to where, you know, why are you doing this? Um, I'd rather struggle than give my baby away, or I got positive reactions like, wow, you know, you're giving a family, a couple a chance to be a family. When people ask me about adoption, one of the things that I really say a lot is that adoption is a great opportunity for the birth mom and the baby. Um, it's a great alternative to anything else that could happen. It gives a great chance for uh, the birth mom and the baby to have an amazing life, even if they're not together at the time being. I knew, again, that I was adopted, but I never felt a disconnect or a separation of any kind. Um, I've been so very loved throughout my life, so 
I've always loved that I'm adopted. It makes me who I am. Even though that that I uh, that my that my mom didn't really give birth to me, that she's still my mom. I want other people to know about adoption that don't know much about it. Um, just to, I want them to know the truth. It's one of the most selfless things that a woman can do for their child is to give them everything that they can possibly have in their life if the mother can't, the mother and father can't exactly give that to them. You have to do what's best for your child and what you think is best for your child, not what's best for you and what feels good for you right that second. You have to put your child number one. And that's what I did. I put Mariah number one. I put my feelings on hold and aside and did what was best for her. I want my son to know that I placed him for adoption for love. I mean, I love him enough to have done this. Um, what I don't want baby Mariah to know about me is that I love her so much and I wanted to give her the best life that I possibly could and I knew that this would, adoption would be the best life that I could provide for her. I have no idea what I would say to my birth mother except that I'm just so proud of her for making the decision that she did. I always tell them that, I just tell them thank you um, and I think the first time I said that it kind of blew their minds because they expect, you know, I guess just, I'm mad at you, I don't love you, why did you do this to me? But um, I just tell them always that I'm thankful to them and I'm grateful to them. Probably say that, that I'm living a good life and that she, uh, she made a good decision. Learn how you can become a hero at bravelove.org. When many women are facing an unplanned pregnancy, fear sets in. It can be fear about how to afford another child or even how to complete your education. That's why for many women, abortion seems like the best and most immediate solution. Few women realize the emotional pain that most women experience after the abortion procedure. If you're pregnant and you're unsure of what to do, please reach out to our helpline where you will receive compassionate and confidential help. Up next, an adoption story. This was not my plan and I can't see through it. This glaring light in front of me. For years, I've been longing, hoping, dreaming. That glimmer of hope seems to be growing dim. Pregnant? Me? How will I finish school and provide for a child? Where, who do I go to? I just am totally unprepared. Everything is set. The baby room is ready. Diapers, enough for weeks. Where is this child? My light. I'm having a boy. I wonder, will he have my nose, my sweet tooth? What will make him laugh? The more I think of him, the more clearly I can see. Adoption. Complete strangers that will love my child as their own. I think it's right for me, for him. She hasn't chosen us yet, but I feel for her, the birth mother of my future child. The depth of her love, her fear, her strength. When I saw their book, I just knew. My child belongs in this family, in their home, with their love. She picked us. We're finally going to have a baby. Not only do I love this child, but my love for her runs deep. This is the bravest love I have ever known. My arms will feel the weight of a child. She will take on for me the weight I am unable to hold, caring for him in every way. I promise he'll be nurtured. In her nine months of devotion,
teach him the art of living. She will be the mother I am just not ready to be. Her sacrifice has met my longing. Because of her, I can see my future again. All of us here at Real Life agree that birth moms are heroes and are to be commended and to be thanked for their very brave love to choose life for their baby and place their baby for adoption because they're not at a place that they can parent yet. We want you to know that if you are in a crisis pregnancy and you don't know what to do, please call the helpline on the screen. Someone there with professional experience and training will help lead you through your options and resources. My dearest Brayden, there are so many things that I want to tell you and even more questions that I long to ask, but finding the right words have been a bit of a challenge for me. So I'll start by telling you that not a single day has passed that I've not thought about you and wondered how you are. From the first moment I held you in my arms, I knew my life would never be the same. I stared at you for hours and whispered to you all of my hopes and dreams for your future. I explained to you exactly why I made my decision to place you for adoption, and I prayed that you would one day understand. When I first found out I was pregnant, I was terrified. I didn't know what to think or how to respond. I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to do, so um, I cried a whole lot and just prayed a lot um, about the choice that I was about to have to make. I knew that at that point in my life, abortion was not something that I was ready to go through. Um, I also knew that parenting was not something that I was prepared to do just yet. My initial thoughts on adoption were absolutely not. I could never do that. In my mind, I thought that it meant that I would have this child and give him to a stranger and never know anything about him or her and that that scared me. It was not until my mom kind of educated me on how adoption had changed that it made me realize that I do have more options. I can get to know this child. I can choose his family and that ultimately was why I why I chose it. Brave Love began with a small group of individuals working closely with a pregnancy resource center in Dallas, Texas. And the director of the center came to us with the problem that few, if any, of the clients that walked in her doors were even willing to discuss adoption, much less place for adoption. We want to erase the shame and the stigma and often the mystery that surrounds adoption so that others can see it for the brave and loving and heroic act of a birth mom that it actually is. You know, we want to see peers, friends, parents, pastors, teachers, grandparents, the general population champion this woman. So that way, when other women find themselves in an unplanned pregnancy, they may feel empowered and encouraged and most of all supported. I must have told you I loved you a million times and cried a million tears. It hurt so bad to let you go, but I knew that it was best for you. Even though our time together was very brief, I have been blessed to have the opportunity to watch you grow up from a distance over the years. I want you to know how honored I am to be your birth mother and how proud I am of the amazing young man you're growing up to be. Content production resource development, marketing and communications, partner relationships. This is what we do. We don't provide direct services. Rather, we're focused on sharing a message that adoption is a loving option, and we distribute this through media and content. So we're bravelove.org. We're excited what's coming down the road for Brave Love. We are 
creating a series of videos for pregnancy centers and health clinics. Um, in addition to those videos, we are creating a training piece that can be used so that the staff volunteers of pregnancy centers and health clinics can be equipped to talk on adoption. There are a few ways to get involved with Brave Love. The first would be through social media. We regularly provide updates and stories and content that can be shared and distributed to others in your network, in your uh, circle of friends and in your communities. The second would be shirts and those kinds of things. This provides a, a way to use your own personal creativity in how you share the message of adoption with others around you. One of the other ways to be involved with Brave Love is to become an ambassador. And ambassadors are monthly financial supporters who've committed to provide funding for Brave Love on a monthly basis so that we can extend our message and extend our operations uh, continually and consistently. One of the keys for Brave Love to be successful is we want to be sustainable. So ambassadors make that happen. They make projects and campaigns and initiatives happen. And if you've seen a billboard or a display uh, downtown or anywhere or driving, uh, that's because an ambassador made it happen. Becoming an ambassador is really easy. You can go to our website, bravelove.org, sign up, and commit to give on a regular basis. Your dollars are going to impact the, the spread of adoption in a very, very significant way. Brave Love is just kind of empowering everybody in this adoption movement to be proud of it, be proud of their story, be willing to share, because uh, you never know who your story might touch. There's a lack of information and there's a misperception of what adoption is today. Adoption has changed and it can be a beautiful thing. And we believe that birth moms are heroes. And so that's the message that we want to equip pregnancy centers, health clinics, adoption agencies, and other groups with. Brave Love needs ambassadors. We need regular contributors who are willing to partner with us on a regular basis to help us reach the world with the message that adoption can be a beautiful thing. Whether you're pro-life or whether you're pro-choice, that woman who's willing to go through that for the love of her child is somebody that we can all get behind. Our mission on Real Life is to share God's unconditional love for all people and the value of every life. Life is a sacred gift given by God and must be protected at all times. That's one of the many reasons that adoption is such a beautiful thing. A birth mom's sacrifice is heroic and brings blessing into the families of many. Up next, meet Rachel and hear about her fight for life. Well, I've always known the story, bits and pieces, of course, um, depending on the age that I was that was appropriate to share. But the day that I found out that three doctors wanted me dead was heart-wrenching. To think that people wouldn't value my life, wouldn't value the lives of hundreds of children just because of our location. Your heart must be very hardened and broken. And I distinctly remember going online and Googling the physicians who didn't fight for me and who did. And, um, and I sobbed. I sobbed and I, I said to God, I said that I will do everything in my power to make sure that people know that abortion is not the answer. And God, he burdened my heart to write to the physicians who told my parents to abort me. And it was a six month process. 
And through it all, my heart was that these physicians would know that Jesus loves them. I wanted them to know that he's given them such a huge power and to ask them that they would be willing to use that power to fight for life and not to harm life. And so I sent it off unexpectedly. Um, go to the mailbox one day, two weeks later, I see a handwritten note by one of the physicians. And this physician said to me, you know, that they're thankful that I lived, that they didn't think I would survive. And she said, God bless you. Then it was probably not even a week later, I get another handwritten note and they say, I, I didn't think you would live at all. I, I didn't. Um, and I, I'm thankful that you're here and I would like to meet you one day. When you're looking at their faces and then you're reading what, what they've said and you're hearing from your parents what they said and it, all of this just comes together and you're overwhelmed. You're overwhelmed that the medical field would sometimes choose to use their power to harm instead of to fight. It crushed me and it gave me even more passion to say, God, will you please allow me to be able to tell people how much hope there is in choosing life. I would have missed out on to amazing parents, on getting to hear people's stories, getting to meet the most awesome people in Uganda, getting to squeeze and give hugs to so many Ugandan little children. And I would have missed out on a life that is such a joy. Thank you to liveaction.org and Rachel for sharing her story. A lot of what we've talked about here today on Real Life is adoption, the value and the blessing of a birth mom giving her child up so that another family can adopt that child. I want to lead us in a prayer in just a moment. Father, we come to you right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, for every birth mom that's watching for every woman that has made that sacrifice to give up her child, to allow her child to have life and to be placed into a family where they will be loved and protected. We pray blessings over birth moms everywhere. And Father, for those that are watching that are adopted, I pray that each one will know how much you value them and how much you love them. God, we thank you for the many blessings that you show and I ask you, Father, to show yourself real to each person that's watching. God, we pray it in Jesus' name, amen. That's it for today on Real Life. We'll see you again next week. If you would like to share your abortion-related story, please contact us through our website, www.reallifetv.life, or through our Facebook page at Real Life CTN. If you need help in dealing with either an unplanned pregnancy or regret from a past abortion, please contact the H3 Helpline at 866-721-7881. Thanks for watching. See you next week.